Anyone looking for a colorful family history, need only take a peek, at the clan Sinclair. Their family have ties to William the Conqueror, a pre-Columbus voyage to the New World, and liege lords to Robert the Bruce. To top it all is their position as Scottish Grand Masters of the Knights Templar, and legendary guardians of the secrets of Roslyn. I'm going to venture a guess, that there are more books, written about the Sinclair family, than there are most other families out there. The Da Vinci Code, Holy Blood, Holy Grail, and the Templar Meridians, the secret mapping of the New World, to name just a few. British genealogist Sir Bernard Burke, wrote, No family in Europe, beneath the rank of royalty, boasts a higher antiquity, a nobler illustration, or a more romantic interest, than that of St. Clair's. Sir Walter Scott, Scottish historical novelist, called the St. Clair's, the lordly line of High St. Clair. Rosslyn Chapel was founded as a Catholic church by William St. Clair, first Earl of Cthness of the St. Clair family in the mid-15th century. According to some accounts, the descendants of Jesus Christ and members of the Knights Templar existed within the Sinclair family. Dan Brown used this theory in his 2003 novel The Da Vinci Code, with the chapel being used as a location in the film version which was released three years later. Despite being dismissed by historians and the Catholic Church, the novel has sold over 80 million copies worldwide. What is claimed as a carving on a glacial boulder in the town of Westford, in Massachusetts, USA, is argued to be proof that an expedition, led by Henry Sinclair, Earl of Orkney, landed on the North American continent almost 100 years before Christopher Columbus. The carving is subject to much speculation over its authenticity, but it is said to depict a medieval knight with sword and shield who was a fallen member of Sinclair's party who traveled to the New World in 1398. Evidence exists to support the Templars' involvement in the Oak Island money pit, but to expand this theory further, it would be useful to consider the influence of the Freemasons in this area, as the Templar were a precursor for this select group of individuals. It is also said that Freemasonry, in the form we would recognize today, started at the building of Roslyn Chapel. There are three important pieces of evidence which support this statement. Roslyn links the Jewish temple through the Knights Templar to Freemasonry. The ground plan of Roslyn is a copy of Herod's temple and above ground it replicates the Herodian architecture of Jerusalem. Roslyn contains the oldest document showing a modern first-degree ceremony being conducted by a Knight Templar. The layout of Roslyn, which was started in 1440, is an exact replica of the ground plan of the Third Temple, built in Jerusalem by Herod and destroyed in the first century by the Romans. On the lower frame of the window in the southwest corner of the chapel there is a carving which seems to be of a Freemasonic first degree. The figure shows a man kneeling between two pillars. He is blindfolded and has a running noose about his neck. His feet are in a strange and unnatural posture and in his left hand he holds a Bible. The end of the rope about his neck is held by another man who is wearing the mantle of a Knight Templar. Roslyn was built by Sir William St. Clair, Jarl of Orkney. He was a direct descent of William de St. Clair last Temple Grand Master of Scotland, who died taking the heart of the dead king, Robert de Bruce on a last crusade to Jerusalem. Sir William, the chapel builder, is also the direct ancestor of first Grand Master Mason of Scotland, also named William Sinclair. Roslyn was built to house artifacts brought by the Knights Templar to Scotland in 1126. Between 1118 and 1128 the Templars excavated the ruins of Herod's Temple in Jerusalem. Hugh de Pain, first Grand Master of the Knights Templar, served on the First Crusade with Henri Saint Clair. In 1126 where he was given land to build the First Templar Preceptory outside the Holy Land. 
In 1860 the British Army engineers mounted an expedition to Jerusalem and two lieutenants, Wilson and Warren, mapped out the city to Ordnance Survey standards. They excavated beneath Temple Mount and found many deep tunnels in which they also found and recorded Templar artifacts. William brought in masons to build Roslyn, and built the town of Roslyn to house them. When James II died, 1460, his son, James III, thought William was posing to greater threat to the Crown of Scotland, so he stripped William of Orkney and broke up his estates. If you peppered Scotland with dots across Lothian and Cthness in medieval times, says writer and Scots historian Ashley Cowie, chances are you'd land within 10 miles of a St. Clair property. Cowie has spent a decade researching the family, and has discovered that if you follow a straight line, from Roslyn directly due north you end up at the Castle of Me, which was built in the 16th century by the 4th Earl of Cthness, George St. Clair. Ravenscraig and Case Castles, also St. Clair built, are on that grid line and so is Balmoral Castle, which has at its core another castle built in the 14th century by William Drummond, married to a St. Clair. This same line passes Holyrood, named after the sacred relic of the True Cross or Holy Rood. This was said to have been guarded on its journey from Hungary to Scotland by William St. Clair, Cabera to Margaret Atheling. Dozens of other St. Clair castles and strongholds are alleged to follow a connecting geometric pattern involving the reusage of ancient megalithic and druidic sites. This is used to demonstrate St. Clair connections to the Knights Templar, who could have introduced them to the teaching of sacred geometry. The remains of William St. Clair, great-grandfather of the founder of Roslyn Chapel, are said to be buried in Roslyn, Templar style, with crossed leg bones placed beneath skull. The proud and noble Scottish family of Sinclair, St. Clair, is of hearty Viking stock with dual roots extending more than a millennium back in time, to the ancient Norse earldoms of Orkney, and Cthness and the Dukedom of Normandy. The surname of Sinclair in French is de Sancto Claro and in Latin, Sanctus Claris, meaning Holy Light. The name derives from a town near Paris, close to the location of the hermit Saint Clair's martyrdom. Saint Clair Zurept was the scene of a treaty in 912 between Charles, King of the Franks, and the Viking marauder Gange Rolf, or Rollo as he is also known whereby Rollo was granted that part of France now called Normandy in return for his acceptance of Charles as his king and his embracement of Christianity. Rollo was to become the first Duke of Normandy and those of his descendants who took the name of Saint Clair later became cousins to a later Duke of Normandy, William the Conqueror. As recorded in the Battle Rolls and suggested in the Doomsday Book, Several St. Clair Knights were likely companions of William at the Battle of Hastings in 1066 and were thus granted lands in England following the conquest. Other Norman Knights of the surname St. Clair are thought to have sought their fortunes further north in Scotland. Tradition has it that one of these Normans of lordly rank was William the seemly St. Clair who joined the court of Malcolm Canmore. William faithfully served the king's wife, Margaret as her cup-bearer and for his services, it is said that he was granted a charter of lands at Roslyn. Later, Sir William St. Clair was to die fighting his cousin William the Conqueror. In 1163 Henry de St. Clair was granted a charter of the lands of Herdmanston near Haddington, thus founding a line which later was raised to peerage status under the title of Lord St. Clair. The progenitor of the St. Clairs of Roslyn and the Sinclairs of Cthness is believed to be the Norman immigrant Guillaume, William, de St. Clair who acquired the lands of Roslyn by marriage to its heiress, Amisha de Rosclin, as documented by a charter issued in 1280 by King Alexander III of Scotland. Sir William served as ambassador to France before being taken captive at the Battle of Dunbar and died a year later in 1297. William's eldest son, Sir Edward St. Clair, Edward's brother William, later made the Bishop of Dunkeld, and Edward's son, William St. Clair, gave faithful service to Robert the Bruce in Scotland's Wars of Independence. These three Roslyn St. Clairs, 
along with Sir William St. Clair of Herdmanston, were present on the field at Bannockburn on June 24, 1314 when the Scots soundly defeated the English. Edward later was to be a signatory to the Declaration of Arbroath in 1320. His son, William, died along with Sir James Douglas in 1330 at the Battle of Tabor in Spain on a mission to carry the heart of Robert the Bruce to the Holy Land. This William's son, another William who died in Lithuania serving with the Teutonic Knights, was the father of Prince Henry St. Clair, the first St. Clair Earl of Orkney who is believed to have visited America in 1398 nearly a century before Columbus. The second Earl of Orkney, who lived lavishly like a king, was the guardian of James I of Scotland during his minority. The House of the High St. Clair reached its zenith with the third and last Earl of Orkney, William St. Clair, who was the founder of Roslyn Chapel in 1446. Earl William was granted the Earldom of Cthness in 1456, becoming the first Sinclair Earl of this northern domain, but in 1471 he surrendered the Earldom of Orkney to King James III. The Earls of Cthness historically have been the chiefs of the Sinclairs of Cthness, and like the Sutherlands, Guns and MacLods, the family is regarded to be a Highland clan in every sense of the word. Over the past 500 plus years there have been 20 Sinclair Earls of Cthness. By several accounts, the history of the clan in its northern stronghold during the 16th and 17th centuries was a bloody one. William, the second Earl, was slain along with his king, James IV, at the Battle of Flodden in 1513. Later, in 1529, John, the third Earl and a large contingent of Cthness clansmen whom he led, were slaughtered to the man in an ill-fated invasion of Orkney. At the Battle of Kringen in Norway in 1612, a large band of locals ambushed a mercenary force of largely Wick volunteers on their way to assist the Swedes in the Kalmar War. One of the Scots leaders, George Sinclair, along with more than half his company, was slain. Regarded by some to be the last clan war in Scotland, the Battle of Altamarlach in 1680 was fought between George St. Clair of Case and Sir John Campbell of Glenorchy in a dispute over the Earldom of Cthness. The opposing sides met a mile west of Wick near the stream of Altamarlach where St. Clair's small force was soundly defeated with more than a 100 casualties. Years later, the Northern Sinclairs were prepared to take part in the Rising of 1745, but disbanded after the defeat of Bonnie Prince Charlie at Culloden. The Ninth Earl of Cthness, who died in 1765, was the last surviving peer to sit in the Scottish Parliament. Although Cthness and Orkney are considered the clan home for the Sinclairs, families of this surname and their descendants can be found throughout the world, playing prominent roles in the history of Australia. Canada, New Zealand, South Africa and the United States. Clan Sinclair is represented worldwide by associations in Australia, Canada, Italy, New Zealand, Scotland and the United States. The patron of these companion associations is the Right Honourable Malcolm Sinclair, 20th Earl of Cthness, hereditary chief of the Clan Sinclair. The clan's rich and colourful history as represented by such iconic works in stone as Sinclair Guernico Castle and the chapel at Roslyn, is a legacy for which the family of Sinclair today can be rightfully proud. Places of Interest, Roslyn, Midlothian. This picturesque village sprang up beside the 14th century castle and 15th century chapel, built by the St. Clairs of Roslyn. Roslyn Chapel has recently attracted worldwide interest from featuring in the best-selling novel, The Da Vinci Code. Castle of Me, Cthness. Built in 1568 by George, 5th Earl of Cthness. It is today probably best known for having been the private home and retreat of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother. Case Castle, Case, Cthness. Remnants of a small 16th century tower can be seen here. The 19th century castle nearby was the home of Sir William Sinclair, founder and pastor of the First Baptist Church in Scotland. Noss Head, Wick, Cthness. The ruins of castles St. Clair and Guernico can be seen here. The estates were invaded in 1697 by Campbell of Glenorchy and both castles were destroyed 